it's Rome versus Cat Posse. We're in year AD 476. You know what? Actually, I won't run down the, the context of this match. We actually have an invite playoff video to explain the stage two seating bracket structure, at least for this portion of stage two, made by RGL's Kwee Let's quickly run it down, and we'll get straight into the match later on. Play it of a clip. Season 12 of Invite is seeing a large format change. This season has eight teams, and playoffs will be open to all eight teams. However, seeding in playoffs matters greatly, as the bracket is sorted into an upper bracket and lower bracket. Losing in the upper bracket sends a team down to the lower bracket, while losing in the lower bracket results in elimination from playoffs. The top four seeds entering playoffs will begin in the upper bracket, while the bottom four will begin in the lower bracket. The regular season, as such, will be a competition for the best possible seeding in playoffs. To determine the seeding, the regular season is broken into two parts, called stages. Stage 1 is a single round robin, where every team plays each other once. The final results of stage 1 determine sorting into stage 2. It consists of two groups, Group A and Group B. Group A consists of the top four teams from stage 1, and Group B consists of the bottom four. For Group A, placing top two within the group sets your playoff spot as one of the top two seeds, meaning teams will begin in the upper bracket. Placing in the bottom two of Group A sends you to a middle bracket, where you will have to compete with Group B players for the remaining top four playoff spots. For Group B, placing top two within the group allows you to compete against the bottom two from Group A in the middle bracket for the remaining top four playoff spots. Placing bottom two in Group B solidifies your placement in the bottom four playoff spots meaning teams begin playoffs in the lower bracket. The middle bracket is a single elimination bracket between the bottom two teams of Group A and the top two teams of Group B, and will determine seeds 3 through 6 in playoffs. Winner of this bracket will be seed 3, second place will be seed 4, third place will be seed 5, and last place will be seed 6. Altogether, Stage 2 will determine seeding for playoffs. Teams are motivated to perform well in Stage 2 to avoid immediate placement into the lower bracket. Overall, Stage 2 provides teams with a chance to show their improvement from Stage 1 and secure a solid spot in playoffs. Each match played ought to be more challenging for each team involved, and we hope to see match quality improve as a result of these changes. Thank you all for who for taking the time to watch that video. That was made by RJL's Kwee Thank you to him. We're... We also had a supporting graphic from last stream that was made by Rao, so thank you to her. Uh, Rao, sorry, not Rao. But either way, this is bracket two. So these are people, these are the teams that finished fifth through eighth in the regular season. Number five, Cat Posse versus number eight, Rome. Could you run down the rosters and give me a little bit of context here, Bacon? Yep, let's start off with the uh, returning roster. We got Cat Posse, we got Haas on Romer. Um, we got, with a flank with him, we also got Yum Yum, been pals for a while. On combo scout, we have Shining Star. On Demo Man, we got Kurama. On Pocket Soldier, we got KTB. And then on Med, we have Routine, the only player who uh, has not played with this team in previous iterations. Then on the side of Rome, we've got Vio, the leader. Uh, Scuba Steve, who's been... A uh, new member this season. Then, now kind of replacing their flank, formerly we had Rive and Raven, the two R's. Now we've got Frisbee and Avril, or excuse me, Electroheart, but also known as Avril Levine Fan 95 on RGL. You may also know him by many other names. On Med, we got Gadilly, and on Demoman, we got MiG 21. So yeah, I mean, kind of as saying earlier, just, you know, do have two people. Replaced um, Electra, obviously played an uh, invite before, uh, actually this season including, on Soldier, but uh, just didn't quite work out for that team, but now on Flank Scout, not the class I usually see him playing, but he does have experience on Scout, has played at you know, high divisions in advance at least, and possibly an invite in the past on Scout. Um, and then Frisbee, uh, making a much larger jump, however was a former team at views during the Sweaty Spaghetti era. Uh, now coming from bottom team in advance to one of the teams in invite. Um, so yeah, I mean, certainly making a late, late change in their roster from at the end of uh, stage one. 
going to be quite difficult, especially considering their last match um, was already pretty... Uh, it, it definitely felt like they started out strong and then things kind of started crumbling and falling apart at the end, but we'll see if this new roster is uh, able to refresh them. But uh, and then, as we said, we'll see Cat Posse, the same people we usually see from this group, just with Routine on Med now. now I know yeah. for Wild Jay, do you have any uh, thoughts on these rosters or any kind of cool fact oh. you want to throw out there? I got to say for Rome, Violus Caesar's father, Julius Caesar, he was just stabbed in the toilet. His two top generals, Raven and Rive, mutinied against them. They've left Rome. They've went to Greece. And now Violus Caesar, he has to pick up the pieces with his trustworthy aides and bodyguard, Gadilly, Mig, Steve. And now he's picked up Electra Heart and Frisbee. You know, he's poached some other top generals and now they've got to figure out how to pick up the pieces from this now weekend Rome roster. I, I'm not really too sure like how to feel about this match. If you look at the power rankings for everybody and just the general consensus about this match in the community, this is already a foregone conclusion per se. But if Rome can show some signs of brilliance here, despite having lost pretty much one of the top parts of their team structure, and composition which is Riven Raven and Raven at that you and me Gibbard both believe that Raven was probably one of their best players in this season overall at least for stage one if Rome can show at least some signs of improvement but it doesn't look like they've been doing so well against the top advanced teams and scrims you know there is hope there is hope because you know this is only a seeding bracket stage two playoffs has not occurred yet so they still have some time to warm up and you know gel with their new flank Exactly, and that's kind of one of the great things about this format that we kind of talked about yesterday as well, that just the fact they have this format, the chances to come back, you have some time to learn. I mean, the, the parts in the beginning and the middle do matter, but, you know, if you, you know, are able to really improve towards the last phase, it does give you kind of another chance to come back, uh, really show what you've learned throughout the season. And for those who do not know, we do have our channel point predictions up as usual. We're doing it on a map-by-map -map basis. You can bet the map one winner right now with your channel points there's no actual real tangible money cost but i mean if you want to get vip a hundred thousand points you could do so we're going live rome on blue cat posse on red i believe this is cat Posse's cat posse's uh map just snake water and we're going live to the first mid and get i already see some shenanigans on the wet weapon unlocks meg is on the quickie bomb yeah i think you i've seen him use it on this map quite a bit i just don't throw his people off uh, just being seeing your six get cleared by that, if you don't expect it, can definitely throw some uh, a wrench in the plans. So we have Scumbag Steve with a bomb, or excuse me, Scoopy Steve with a bomb, onto the map. Takes down Kurama though, still living behind 4 and 4 right now. Uh, in the meantime, Kadili does go down though. Yeah, Hellstar, the... aka Shining Star, was able to get in off of his, her social distractions. And now they're taking a 2v1 with the help of Yum Yum. And they do kill Electra Heart, and it is the mid wipe. Broteen was managed to stay alive that entire mid, so he will have full uber advantage. Gibbert, both double bombs were initiated. Toss actually did a fade there on the mid, but Cat Posse, they come out on top, and I think the scouts are the strong points of this team. Yeah, and reinitiation quickly by Room. Frisbee immediately dying, though. Vio also going super deep here, just... Oh, man. Two immediate deaths. Look like maybe some sort of sack setup, but I don't know if they meant to lose two, now three there. Uh, this is going to be pretty hard to hold. Billy, only 40%. Doesn't look like he's gonna get the super without a miracle. All of Kappa see now flooding again, and that's gonna be a quick first round for them. Yeah, very odd scenario to be in if you're Rome. You chose you lost the mid, you have full Uber disadvantage, yet you choose to essentially put all your resources resources into getting the force onto Bro Team there. And the real big juxtaposition between that and a su successful force is what you saw there. It's a complete wipe. Capacity roll to last. And that's the danger of trying to sack on a second there in that kind of scenario, Gibbert. Yeah, and I think Frisbee is just way, way too fast there. I mean, he was in before any other team was pressuring really and just instantly melted before any other pressure was there. Um, I think Bro is going for more conventional setups, spamming, getting into good positions, and then leaving a second last, losing one, would have been much safer there. Especially if they were um just the execution was off i mean doing it that way could work sometimes you could make an argument for it maybe change things up a little bit but just the way they executed definitely was uh never gonna work against a team like cat posse oh we do have some downtime here with a pause i would assume that maybe this is a momentum pause i would assume it's a tactical one 
But this early on, you could argue and assume that it is a technical pause. Either, either way, we won't spoil that to you. We don't even know either. Let's talk about, you know, a little more about Cat Posse. I went over Rome for the most part in the pregame. But Cat Posse, they had a, what I would call a gradual increase. You know, if you think about Moore's Law, you know, over time, double the improvement of transistors. Actually, never mind. We're back into the mid, so never mind. I'll hold that my thought there. Cat, get more ticket away. Yep. Pretty similar mid, mid, like I said, Nick not on the funny weapon anymore. He's playing more standard. Actually, yes, actually, speaking of it, Frisbee, back on the mud. It's way early though, Scoop Seed with the follow up. I didn't able to get much on the broken, but we can sell over 100 health here. That's gonna be forced recruit room and retreat as players falling on the retreat. Now, Gadilly just leaving alone, trying to sneak away through Africa. Okay, TB though, already on the hunt. Could cut him off from the lower exit, bombing and in the top And he's on and yeah, Gadilly nice. not able to hit the serve and good clean by KTB on the chase down there. That's going to be a big advantage for uh, Cat Posse pushing the last. It will be a free second with the late deaths. No heals, no buffs out. That's going to, uh, once again, make it much harder for Rome. Very good death ball from Cat Posse on that mid. It leads to them having pretty much a clean mid at that, only losing one player. And now they have the full Uber advantage. They're probably going to lead it in through Shutter, buffing up their players, gathering up. Shining Star going to take the helm of this Uber, leading with Kurama. They see the Sentry at level 2 towards the spawn door. They do take it down really quickly. And Shining Star shooting off 6, going to play point. In the meanwhile, they're going to try to collapse. They take off the point. Grass Beast is out on VO. They're all defending from the right spawn door, but there's just no one able to contest the cap. Frisbee's going to contest it, but half HP. Now that he's going to go down in mid 2 with 20 HP, the resub is in, but nobody able to get any ground out of the right spawn door from Rome and Cat Posse. They just trample all over them. Yeah, I think a lot of what happened there, I mean, I feel like it seems like there's always a soldier getting caught early in these fights. Just think something way for the rest of the team. Like right there, we saw Scuba Steve. Um, just dying on the left by himself there, making the, the post 6v6 much more difficult. And then on the last minute, just the soldier to bomb so fast, not able to get anything. No follow-up from the team, just too fast. And as we say that, another Ooh. soldier coming and toss, melting himself. KTB also in, also getting shredded though. So much better mid for Rome, just kind of playing to absorb the aggression and absorb the aggression they did, just cleaning up both the soldiers one after one. Yeah, they play it off like a light switch right there. They entirely different from the last mid where they actually played against the aggression of Rome. And we see Rome now taking an aggress aggression here. They're walking up to Constantinople here, trying to reclaim the ground that they lost against Cap Posse. And they do take second relatively for free, but Yum Yum has snuck his way behind in Saw. Scumbag Steve, or actually Scuba Steve, sorry, now that he's gone under that new moniker, looking for him. But Yum Yum is going to choose to play his life. And with the even Uber ad, even Uber situation, he can afford to do so. If he was stuck behind and Cat Posse were at Uber to said, probably would not want to make that play. The Venoria Shining Star on the gun, trying to keep it alive. KTB trying to stuff this lower door from the spam, trying to keep it alive. And Young Num, you know, as we know, very vocal player. I know he's like calling a lot of information, trying to get him ready to coordinate something. Um, that, I think that's definitely one of the strengths Cat Posse has. They have a player like that that's really able to. Radio back and forth with the combo, really help coordinate things, keep things together. Yum Yum is still running Saw, so he'll be out of the play right now as the pressure on, so the sentry gun is successful from Scuba Steve and Frisbee. They get the gun down, and Yum Yum has now snuck his way into cheese, but has to fall back, seeing players too close to him, and they're just going to play the waiting game. We've seen with the new config, the progressive rule set, that teams have elected to not push out of Snake Water last. Similar to that of Gully Wash last, they intend to play for the round reset, and I think that's what Cat Posse are opting for, Gibbert. Yeah, I already made it down. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still behind. Kind of in an awkward spot to have another off class. I, I think it's justifiable, especially in a situation like this, when if you're feeling confident, already up your rounds, uh, no re reason to give the other team a chance to get back in it. The gun is getting pressure from lower, but two soldiers on Cat Posse double up into the ring they go when they get Frisbee and, and Scuba and they, Steve. Uh, with two soldiers down, this makes it much easier to push out, especially when you have a scout behind like this already drawing some eyes. Yeah, but we'll see the exchange. what happens here. So yeah, one soldier coming through, KTP still lurking in Africa. Just going to oh, the side, Annika Dudley. Nice clean up though. They get two. He's kind yeah, of a double stack out of last, and oh, cut three out of last. That's oh actually goodness. a big and opportunity for KTB's 24 for HP, a KTB long range getting it back up, still at the gun up, going to buy some time. KTB onto Avril Levine, or Leprehart, oh but getting cleaned up by Vio from the other side. Crossbam comes out. Nobody's in protein! There's nobody to Uber, there's nobody to Flash! And it's Rome! They've walked in like it's their house! And this is looking very successful for them, but their HP is low in the post. A lot of flashes, though. 
Oh, it's actually going to be pretty cool, Super. They get the cap done. That's going to be cap. One Insane. to two. Yeah, kind what of do like, you think like you said, the, uh, um, so what was that? What do you think went wrong there? I think Cap also got too overzealous there on the counter yeah, side. I mean, at the end of the day, going down three, just never what you really want to do. Even almost worked out for them. They were able to kind of solo the soldier and then make sure they can flash too, but I mean, just getting in that situation in the first place is the real problem. Well, we're into the fourth mid and not even 10 minutes have elapsed from this map. Scumbag Steve taking aggression here, is able to jump out Rosalie for free, and he's going to cycle off with the Frisbee bomb, but Frisbee finds nothing. Cap Posse are just turtling up towards the Saw entrance, and they're successful, but never mind that. Three quick frags in succession from Rome. They clean up everybody but Shining Star and Protein Shining Star, of which is 28 HP, and able to escape the death of Mig Sticky. So Rome, they take mid, and this is momentum going in their favor, Gibbert. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going much better so far. Uh, especially, I mean, pretty much anything better than getting quick 2 out. But I mean, this is potentially them tying it up right here. Yeah, um, we, I don't think understood. you and I ever expected this either. No, uh, definitely. I mean, you know, they had that quick tack pause if they went down 0-2. And I mean, clearly whatever they talked about paid off because things are going much better now. We do see Shining Star on Sniper. We do see her pushing in, but Vio's going to go aggressive. Missed the shots, quite frankly, at close blank range, at point blank range at that, and does go down, gets punished by KTB. And this is going to be Shining Star being worked in lobby here. Going to try to go for here shot towards Bats, but a rocket shot by Steve immediately forces her away. Yep, and we have Vio coming up on Spy, it looks like. Yeah, he oh. did walk out of spawn, so I see some a little bit of espionage. You know, I kind of looked around at the Spy early on. The, the way I see it, the, it makes people think better for the rest of the game. So there's just one more thing for them to think about for the rest of the match. One more thing to think about. It's the Battle of the Off Classes, but right now, Kaposi, they're situated in a turtle-like setup here with the Sniper and the Engineer. Just your typical cookie-cutter snake water last hold. As Rome, we've seen Vio go up with some very interesting plays. I remember last season on Metalworks, he actually ran a double Spy play in order to get the chop on the medic. I think that was against Fancy Sun's team back then last season. And this time, I think they might just try to opt. Maybe they could go for a spy set for the gun. Frisbee or Steve Sacks. We're just not going to be aware of it just yet. But KTB is already firing play building large rockets. He actually just blindly shoots and hits Vio with a spam rocket, checking for the spy. You have to do something that's a very wise player with as many years of experience. Oh, and it's, you know, which toss going down here, so not going to be much in terms of counter -sack. We'll see if Vio decides to come up Sniper, come up Spy, or back Scout. It does look like he's still on Spy class. Oh, and Electro Heart yeah. tried to go in through top left. He tried to run over Kurama and was close at that. And KTV's going to catch out Frisbee in the 1v1 towards lower. An ideal place to take a 1v1 with a soldier. And Steve almost got caught out too, but was able to fall back. Rome here. Rome here. They were postured for a potential exchange, but no, they're just going to send a one-man sack on Toss, bombing it through Saw, almost gets the air shot on the Gadilly, but Gadilly, the second time he's been propped into the air, and the second time that he has not been forced. Yep, and Vio kind of stuck the last, looked like he might go for kind of a sneaky back cap play, but there was a scout back there, I uh, believe that's Hellstar stopping him, Hellstar now and Pyro actually, going to keep an eye on the... The situation I, they know I the guess. gun is, is being moved right now so frisbee's gonna sack off that information frisbee and, and spy coming in with the decoy at the same time they do get the force nice i like i like the creativity by them yeah that was actually huge because Vio on the spy noticed that yummy was moving the gun and they took that opportunity to go for the double sack really huge now they're in a position to tie it up give or two two take it yeah, away as they're only, postured yeah only lost two uh one person but only lost Vio, so it gives them a chance to actually switch off as well so, definitely the ideal situation. Does look like they'll go ahead and take it, let Vio come in late. Oh, when they I got the gun in a very unusual spot. It looks like they weren't aware of it. Then Electrar dying to the six on the point. Now it looks like a very easy hold for Cap Posse, just cleaning up the scraps here. Aw, oh, man, uh, with that full Uber ad situation, I felt like they had rushed it just a bit too much, Rome. Yeah, it just looked like maybe they needed to spot a little bit more, and then it was just kind of a little bit sloppy, like right dying on the point. Just didn't check the top for sticks, I believe. And just, I mean, when it takes that long to kill the gun in kind of a weird spot, and then you lose some, a scout instantly, it just makes the post fight pretty much impossible. So now we have Lectora on Sniper. 
Yeah, and Cat Posse are pushing in through Kitchen. Shining Star has spotted out the sniper, but actually has to give her life for it. The body shot from Nick is in. And they're going to try to go for very low here. Rex. Vio actually walks in from lower, gets the force by lowering down Yum Yum to very dangerous lo levels of HP. And Cat Posse have given up because Frisbee's on the back cap with the pain train. Distracts him and even gets away with his life. That is daylight robbery. Frisbee lives, Rome retake mid. And they have full Uber ad give work. Yeah, early bombs look a little bit fast for Prisby. I like what I've seen so far from him. Really good play there. Now, potentially giving Garoma a second chance. Oh, and Garoma down, so no sticky's oh, worried about God. for Electro Heart this time. Now, this is a big opportunity. They are able to walk out. Uh, those look like they're walking oh, yeah, in the top left here. Caught in lower, taking the one one versus Electro Heart, but no one gets killed in the end of it. Uber is in KTP forces, but has to lose his life for it. Vio is leading the charge, they're playing the point, but they're not finding players to focus down. Shining Star contesting point, gets hit by the Rockets, and Oh, Rome. they finally get it. I had three players on Cat Bossy right next to the point, just not able to get the block off, able to get that cap done. I mean, that's the power of, you know, when there's not six on the point, just able to get so much of that cap time for free, makes the post fight so much more difficult. And, you know, it was a bit sketchy, Mig going down at the beginning there could have eventually threw away a big opportunity, but luckily the rest of Rome able to salvage it there. Yeah, this is just in the New York Stock Exchange has introduced Rome to the Stock Exchange. Stocks are high right now. Rome looking in a position to potentially steal the map pick from Cat Posse, but they're going to have to keep up this momentum. Double bomb, or a fade bomb, and no, actually it's a committal from Posse, and he kills Gadilly with the help of KTB in the end. But Cat Posse lost both soldiers for it. They have to concede the mid. They have no classes to help fight this. Yeah, considering they got pushed to last last time, I'm, I'm sure they're happy with this. But maybe not, though. Now, with, oh, the fast follow-up from Electroheart and the rest of the team and the other scouts. Taking down pick by pick. Still on the chase here. Nice arrow onto Karama, keeping oh, him alive. Nick. But looks like it'll go down. And my oh, damn! Routine. <laughs> Takes down Electroheart, staying alive there with a melee. But now, oh, uh, naturally, with, with that deep chase, we almost got the med there, but now, uh, don't have mid cap, might slow them down getting a second. Yeah, but you have to respect definitely the fact that Rome, they were in a position to potentially kill Brotein, and while they were unsuccessful, it was a good try at that. But that now enables Cat Posse to be in a position to push back into this mid with full uber add to their name but Karama being low that might actually be able to push just a little bit but they should still be moving in through this kitchen area yeah, they do Karama know they're going through kitchen so it's, it's going to be hard to get through here now that they're spotted going to be hard not to get joked by the spam and then we're kind of hitting his head on the uh the top of the point but should be able to force him back well enough they to pick up electro heart and still have you know uh, and they know behind. Behind behind too. Wary of the uh yeah, and they do pick up that kill, so much better Uber, all, all things considered, only got a little hard, but also picking up Brisbee then definitely makes that worth. And Rome, only with about 50 ads, so I mean, that's one of the advantages of faster easier Uber, the less ad the other team has to work with, if you think about it that way. And if you think about it, Rome should have had Uber, but because Vio had committed to that chase, they weren't being able to build at all, and Electra Hard going for that flank didn't help either. Yum Yum stuck here, Could but had you! Like oh, well, huge like Italy. Use, ends up using the Uber, maybe could have lived there. Depends on the maybe the fall damage RNG, but Uber comes out, so get two picks off it essentially, so able to walk in here. And looks like Cat Boss is just gonna probably wait to get this Here's Uber, take though. it back in through the catwalk. In greater block, we have a toss on it. Gets blocked out of the air by Frisbee, body blocked. Oh, but somehow Brotein gets forced. Brotein still got forced somehow, but Brotein was actually not too hurt there. So you kinda question, maybe he feared the Frisbee bomb a little bit, but regardless of that, they have a demo and a soldier pick. And they do have yeah. mid, so they can roll their way I think they just wanted to pop quickly and get to the point, make sure they get the block. Um, didn't have time to check for anything, so I think making, popping through definitely makes sense here. But nice momentum roll here, taking down another soldier. And, uh, oh, but there's a backup on mid, but it's not going to be enough. So Electroheart has given up his location and whereabouts to the Cat Posse squad. Yep, just so they could actually, behind, all the way they, back. We have, I was, do have I was a thinking. toss coming back for it. Well, yeah, I was thinking KTB, that, uh, you know... Rome would probably go for a pinch on the Uber ad situation that they have right now off of Nick, but it's I think they're very well. Hard. I mean, looks like Electro Hard's still kind of posture, maybe in this kind of kitchen, maybe come back into lower, catch them on the leave. We have Yum Yum now hunting Electro Hard out here. We know who's the uh, MG master. <laughs> Got all the ELO, but you know, Yum Yum actually getting forced back, Electro Hard holding his own. They can still pinch too. Electro Hard catches them on the fallback and gets the force at that. Huge pinch from Electro Hard, and that gives Rome. 
a scenario where they can enter mid without potentially even having to use, but they have to worry about the Kurama Sikis through lower. Have they cleared it? Vio does clear his angles here. And there's a bomb yeah, from KTB. The all over Frisky here. Another little MG scenario, but... Oh, but they've fallen! They're also living. They all went on Godillion to get the force, but they haven't dealt with Yum Yum in the back lines. Frisbee needs the help of Scuba Steve in order to stop the potential backup. Oh, nice they direct by Scuba Steve. <laughs> wow. Unfortunately, no Snakewater second MG Arena, so perhaps a little bit unprepared there. A little bit unprepared indeed. And Rome, they have mid, but they're also at a 25% Uber disad. You're wondering here if Cap Posse is going to try to go off the small ad. And right now, it looks like they're positioned to play a potential stalemate. Potentially, I mean, they did have one player spawning and only about 25 out. Looks like, it looks like maybe they've changed their mind. Looks like they maybe will take this. They're posturing from Burn Saw. They're just going to pop it through 15% out roughly now. So, got to be very careful for this repop from Gadilly here. Oh, oh kind of pushing the lower there, but good damage on some of the combo. But still, it will, like I said, have to be very careful. Don't want to suck everybody on this. Got to be very careful of getting caught. Have Yum Yum. Got a body blocking part of the Uber. Yum Yum now escaping through upper, only losing KTB for that. Isn't a bad oh, and situation. Oh, Rome still gonna. They're gonna keep going and going, but Karama. Oh, on to Karama. Karama, Karama, Karama really gonna about the quirky snipe. Now both soldiers and I like the aggression, continued aggression on the rest of Cat Posse. Definitely want to see them kind of leaving from here. They've got Electro, maybe considering the chase, but the rest of them will escape. They do keep their Uber out, and they actually take down Gadilly during all of that. But uh, I do, nonetheless, I like the aggression, I like the ambition. Yeah, Rome, they they didn't press the brakes. They kept putting pedal to the metal, quite frankly, and quite literally. And even then, though, like, as they entered second, they lost Gadilly. But somehow they were able to salvage it. In the meanwhile, though, Rome... Instead of Vio and Spy, Frisbee's gonna have his try at it. Cat Posse, though, they're all gonna get out through Bass. They're trying to take second off this ad. Yeah, you know, if he's able to get in, you know, in time, start the back up. I mean, they don't have anything set up on last. This could be, you know, uh, Rome going ahead here. Yeah, uh, Frisbee already just decided to commit for Uncloaked now. Sees Cap start. No, I don't think he's gonna Frisbee's be able to get back. KTP. I think he's got it. Maybe. Oh, he gets just in time, but he takes down KTP with a revolver. Oh my god! Gym. And now Room going up 3-2 versus Cat Posse, not what anybody expected at all. I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised to see them get a couple rounds, but, you know, going up in the lead now, in a commanding position with 10 minutes left, that's not what I expected by any means. The main invite streamline for both of these Room soldiers, and now Frisbee has his time to shine. Scuba Steve in the invite qualifiers, and now Frisbee in the stage 2 seeding playoffs. Rome are now up 3-2. We clearly did not expect this on Fireside. And Rome, they're going to continue the momentum. Steve getting good damage on the Karama. Brosin is down to 100 HP. Cap Posse, they're looking scared right now. Like right on to Gadilly. Gadilly not able to hit Surf. Instantly going down. Now just on the rest of Cap Posse, keeping the metal alive. Good cleanup here. So now 3-on-3 three three situation. Just got to be very careful. Screw Steve behind. Oh! oh General coming through the kitchen. On to Brotein right now. Oh. Juking and jiving. Oh. Oh, the spoon by Toss! Digging the final grave and just barely able to hold on to the uh, that Uber there, keeping the metal alive. Scuba Steve able to get out doing all of that. Now kind of go behind, maybe gonna draw some eyes. A little bit of distraction, but looks like he actually probably will go down pretty quickly. Not able to get a whole lot there. And the rest of Cat Posse now moving on to second. Probably gonna be able to take another Uber at push, and uh, if they're able to succeed in this, we'll tie it up three to three. Yeah, there's the gun on the mound there towards the left spawn door of Rome, set up by Nick, aka Electra Heart. And in the meanwhile, Cap Posse, they're getting in through lower. There's no stick set up by Mig, playing the conservative six on the point. Full Uber ad is now dwindling, actually down to 10%. As now, Kadili will have this Uber for this push. This is now negligible ad. Cap Posse, they're taking it a while to deal with the sentry. They get it down, but Kadili has the Uber. They can charge and they can wipe the entirety of Cap Posse on Rome. And they're going to start off with Karama's life. They get. Shining Star, they get protein. Everybody in Shudder, they're, it's just a buffet. It's a buffet. Everybody on Cat Posse is getting eaten up by the Predator that is Rome. And Rome, they take second, but look at this KTB and Yum Yum. They're setting up for the KTB trap play. Need to be very sneaky. Now spotted. Gotta get out there, but yeah, I mean, no whole lot to say about that. The analysis was they just waited too long. Which, uh, yeah, don't want to Uber in with 10 per Uber percent. That's, or 10 Uber, that's not enough. Not enough oh, indeed, they well, just took too much time. Sometimes it is, but in this situation, definitely not. And Shining but, Star, 
postured up on the rocks towards Catwalk, looking for a potential shot, but now realizing that the situation is too far gone, Rome are now about to start their push, and now looking towards the lower, actually has to fall back now, and VL's leading in through lower, they spot the Tosh just pause, able to shoot the rockets force. from the Catwalk, gets the force easily, maybe even get out here, rides off Scuba Steve's head, but now oh, Tosh is caught, Tosh is caught, will he manage to get out, get some damage. shooting arrows, He's pumping arrows onto him, but he still manages to die. But Mig in the meanwhile gets domed by Hellstar, Shining Star, KTB killing Vio and Saw, and Cat Posse. They're gonna leave no time to waste. They're gonna push back in, leading on our Yum Yum through the Saw door entrance. They spot Nick, Electra Heart going for a back cap, but Yum Yum is already on the chase, and Nick should be moment to fall and will go down. I've seen a lot of mid-air collisions between the soldiers here just blocking each other in the air. It's kind of funny to watch the better aircraft control. But as we say that, so 40 add and a pick in favor of Cap Posse. This should be a pretty easy chance to walk it lower. Probably get in without using and to get another pick on a soldier. That definitely makes it easy for them. It's gotta be a little bit careful. They do have Shining Star on Sniper, so one less person help deny, but nonetheless with two picks and decent add, that should be enough to get get them back onto, get them back in position where they wanna be. And they have some Shining Star already conveniently set up on snipers, so able to start working the picks immediately if they wish electra heart's gun is postured as if it were a distance situation and the engineer going down means the gun is down and that means toss has the time to sack but already denied the top Scout, of the scouts in the scouts in hits two shots quick forced. and still it has to use good heads up play off of the century gun pick and the engineer pick vo is going to try to find protein hits one shot only for 36 damage and Vio is just bobbing and weaving around, dancing like a ballerina, but Frisbee nice is going to be the one caught out by Shining Star. Rome, they can't stay too long here on second. Oh, Third full descent. Down before the rest of oh, his team Steve. and just falls into Scuba Steve right there. How does that happen? Shining Star and Co. They were able to get the force, but they botched it. Now Bro Team doesn't have Uber at. They're now in lobby, but they're looks like they're gonna try to go. Young Yum's leading into shutter. They're gonna try to catch up. Just the they see the space. They take the space. So the bomb under the left. Take down Gadilly at the very least. Immediate two shot. Yeah, oh my I'm gosh, able to get out of here. Like they're just gonna, they're just uh, yeah, they're just gonna play the out. I like that. Shining are going down. That oh, but Kurama's caught in. Kurama's caught in. 10, 450 HP, but gets oh, moved. I'm just gonna say, Young Yum, taking down two immediately on the entry. So now only two left, gotta watch over the demo, and another kill by Yum Yum. Three kills on this push. Huge. And that's gonna be a round one. Three kills for round three. Yum Yum coming in clutch there. I thought it looked like at the beginning they might just play the ad, but seeing Kurama in danger, Yum Yum able to go in, save his pal, and win the round for the team there. Yeah, great heads up playing. That's just what DM can do to you. Sometimes it doesn't come down to the strategy, it just comes down to the all out brawl and the DM fest. And that shows the prowess of the MGE hours that Yum Yum has put in. He's tied it up for his team, but even then, not in a safe position. This is their map pick, and Rome 3 3? You know, don't expect it. And Rome, they're gonna try to pick up the pieces, but Cat Posse, they're still in the driver's seat for this map. Shining Star pressing top right, forces off Vio. It's just a. Mexican standoff until the bombs come in from Steve and Toss comes in, but they both fade. Nobody has elected to push just yet, Gibbert. Yeah, by far the slowest mid we've seen so far. Both teams may feel a little bit of pressure, maybe just want to kind of feel it out in this mid. Don't want to go for anything explosive. KTB now getting some good damage. Get rockets from the, uh, the kitchen oh, area. Toss trying to follow up. Gadilly surfs into lower. At the same time, Routine going down there. Krama going down. Gadilly going down. Now a lot of action. And now two left on side of room and only Toss alive. So if he decides to oh. say he decides to go fight Scuba Steve, actually gets a good rocket on him, but Electra comes in with a cleanup. Another Nick close mid, for blood. but Rome, once again, in the driver's seat. Yeah, great bomb from them, Steve. Both mids, yeah, both mids trading out that time, so not going to be too much after this, most likely, but oh. you know, oh, definitely oh, a position oh. you want to be in, and Cat Posse maybe looking like they want to... I see the crits on Gadilly, so they're going to try to counter and one-up Cat Posse's push and they're gonna run it off of the quickie bomb launcher we see the monkey yeti on the mid ice monkey i mean sorry and rome i don't think cat posse are any t anywhere near aware that there's chris on the field Gibbert. we're gonna see how this turns out mig and gadilly the ooh, chris is now online and mig is postured but oh, the but trap Theo going down to the trap early oh, that was so a shining it. star chris just come out and they get 
Kurama with it. They kill Yum Yum too, and they kill Toss. But at what cost? They still haven't forced out the Uber, and it's just an even man for man trade to 3v3. But at the same time, Cat also doesn't have the Uber, only has Sniper, no Scout here. Still a little bit of a playable situation, but Frisbee just deciding to go and maybe go for the side, try to get a force, and uh, just find some time. No one really in position for him to go for it, so very wisely deciding to get out there. Theo trying to you know be sneaky again, back on the spy class. And Gadilly's still committed to the cause in the Chris Creek. They have not opted to switch. They're gonna try to go for the force and they're gonna try to maybe bait in and position MIG towards lower for the counter crits. Vio has spotted it. They are pushing in through Saw, but Vio's gonna go for the guts and the gore. He's gonna go for the backstab, but Protein backs into a corner, avoiding any sort of trick stab. Yeah, Coral also taking a lot of damage, forces the Muse very early here. Just popping through, but they do get two picks. Scuba Steve going down. Vio's still dead from before. This is gonna be a pretty safe point for uh, Cat Boss. But just gotta watch out for this counter Uber. Now 95% on Gadelli. Already yeah, working towards Saw, and Vio did get the. Uh, actually, is crits, as you mentioned. And uh, Vio actually did get forward spawns at least, so we'll see how they're able to play this. Maybe just get some picks with it, work their way in, use the space it creates to try to walk in. We'll see how they play a lot of different ways to play it. They're just walking through sauce. They do see oh, the door Oh, and Kurama's caught up. They're gonna go. In. Oh my gosh, now, everyone in the cap is smacked to the bed now. But they're going for their second gold. back cap. They're getting, really getting cleaned up on the back end. And Gapros looks like they're winning this fight over here on second. You are very low, but oh, KTB also very low. Now Yum Yum coming in for the cleanup through the window on the flank. Taking down Kurama here. They are going to get the second, and that's a wipe for Rome right there. Only yeah, Frisbee and Gadilly. Up. Only Frisbee and Gadilly, yep. And Shining Star is just going straight for the point. Frisbee going to get floated by these two scouts. Not much you can do here without an absolute miracle. Sitting life record for surprising amount of time, but that's Cap Pussy. Going ahead 4 3. Love the play. It's just seeing the. Uh, they, they also knew that one player on Rome was spawning late, so great opportunity to shove the flank there. I like the uh, awareness of that. Yeah, just not. Just. Wondering, maybe if there was a different timeline where if Gadilly had Uber there, that would have been able to work out better had they been able to Uber and you know chase those players back happening in a second. Well, never mind. Yeah, that. Absolutely. At the same time, if you hadn't got killed by the sick trap, I think that second play could have worked out for them. But yeah, definitely. We're, we're on the small things. Mid. Well, Mike, we're on the next mid, and Scuba Steve is gonna initiate, landing straight onto Bro Team, cross up into the air, but isn't able to get the air shot. They're aggressing on Rome, but they're down a player, and they're getting killed by everybody re-aggressing on Capossi. Shining Star leading the charge. KTP bombing into Saul. Everybody else on Rome has backed out through Saul on the second. And Capossi, they're in a chance for the Toss sack. Toss leading in, KTP distracting, leading in through Cheese. They trap Gadilly in the corner, and KTP is gonna try to do the one-two punch. They get Gadilly, and this is looking so bad for Rome. This could be map. It very well could be. Cat boss, he looks like he figured everything out. I, I think that was a bit of an overstay by Rome. They didn't have the Uber to trade. And, you know, still in that, you know, uh, 4v5 scenario. Not able to lock down the doors on Snake. Very risky. And now down three in a really tough situation here. He had an absolute miracle against this Uber ad of Cat Boss. Oh, but they, yum, yum. they do get a pick. A lot of cap time, though. And so Gadilly died at the same time there. Two people on the point, very low, Scoop Steve, still single high with one health, Frisbee also live, finally going down, but pick after pick's falling, and that's going to be map one, favorite cap posse. Um, they took the lead momentarily, but just as they got it, just as fast, cap posse took it right back, and cap posse, they had a slight scare on their map pick, but now they head into Metalworks, comfortable with a 1-0 buffer on the BL3 scoreline. Definitely a surprising showing from Rome. You know, maybe Cat Posse had underestimated their opponents too much, and then they finally cranked up the gear towards the end. But get what we cannot undermine how Rome were able to bring it back despite that swift 2-0 deficit. Yeah, I mean that's very impressive that uh, they're able. They use attack pause very quickly like that, and were able to uh, come up with something to you know essentially. What well, I'm not sure what they talked about, but where they talked about where it definitely seemed like they changed up their mid strategy. And the way they played the mids there um, definitely opened up some big opportunities for them. Taking a quick look at the logs here, I mean, I think the big thing on Rome, I think it's impressive that it ended up being 3-5 with um, the situation in terms of the med deaths. Muscle Hunk, aka Brutin, going 3-2. Wow. and two, Only dying two times in that nearly 30-minute game, getting three kills at the same time. But uh, Rome at the same time, no drops, but not able to keep Gadelli alive. And some of these just look like during the chaos, he's just getting caught in these weird situations, kind of trailing just a little bit behind. Some of it maybe his fault, some of it not, some of it possibly just a team thing, but... And also on the mids, there were just a couple times where, you know, when you're playing against, like, 
experienced invite soldiers like these um, just have to be hitting all those serves. And there were just a couple times where just the mechanics didn't quite hold up and uh, died a few times where he maybe could have lived. So, um, again, I mean, protecting the med at the same time is a team effort. Can't put all of them on the med. Definitely were some situations where um, definitely could have things just look chaotic, could have been cleaned up a little bit for Rome. So, I, I mean, but like I said, I mean, being down, having uh, three less charges and 11 more med deaths and still making it uh, a 3-5 three, three game, it's relatively close. I think that's a good sign for Rome, all things considered, especially on Cat Posse's map. Well, to look at the logs, we do have our usual showboats on the Cat Posse side coming to play today. Shining Star and Yum Yum combining for a combined 49 frags to the scout combo of Rome. Vio with 14, Electra Heart with 13. So that's a 49 to 27 frag differential between the scouts. A huge scout differential at that. But Je we have to also consider the fact that Capossi had two dominant round wins to start off the map. So obviously the logs are going to be a bit skewed considering that. Now, we're heading on to Metalworks Gibbard, which is Rome's map pick. We didn't see Metalworks too much in the regular season from Rome. On stream, that is. Now, off stream, they had a 2 1 loss versus Greasy Dot Hogs on this very map. Now, granted, that was with Rive and Raven on the flank. Now they have Nick, Electra Heart, and Frisbee. Any yeah, man, thoughts uh, for this map? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to expect. I mean, as we saw, you know, Rome can definitely hold their own against this team in that last map. Um, at the same time, you know, we, we look at what they did on stream during the season, lost 0 5 to the other cat team. Maybe uh, the matchup with the cat team's not good on this map. Plus, so, and that was kind of the events that led to uh, Rive and Raven leaving. But you know, with this new roster, who knows what to expect? But like you said, I mean, Greasy Dogs being, you know, probably the the second best team in the division right now. Um, very good sign if they're only losing by one round to them. I don't know. Rome seems like the kind of team. They uh, at least in what we saw last night, they rise to the occasion. What we saw in the match with the Greasy Dogs. Definitely rose to the occasion there. Didn't quite get a win, but nonetheless, relatively impressive performances considering the uh, gap in experience. I mean, we have three people on this team that haven't played. I mean, we actually have no people on this team on Rome that have played Invite before before this. And then everybody, I believe, on the side of Gap Boss has played Invite. I know, of course, they have the five people that have all played um, Invite together before for multiple seasons now. Correct. Well... That being said, we are into map two, which is Rome's pick. This is Metalworks, like I said. If you are just tuning in, map one ended just a few minutes ago and actually was a result that we had not expected. Like we said earlier, it ended 5-3 in favor of Kaposi. Now, this was Kaposi's map pick. So Rome do have some saving graces and some silver linings to work with here on this map. Now, granted, we have not seen this map with Electra Heart and Frisbee in official league play they may have played it in scrims we just don't have the data right now and i didn't even review any of the streams from Gadilly, who actually streams most of rome scrims and matches so for us this is going to be a surprise to see how rome plays and i don't think we've even seen cat posse on this map either gibbler too much in the regular season yeah i'll have to double check that but yeah you are correct the only match they played on that was against uh the other team we spoke of cat girl cafe that was a long arduous affair only won by one zero the whole game so um wonder if that's i mean again that's kind of what we've seen from Cagro cafe they, they are able to neutralize teams keep it a low scoring game but um not able to quite get those wins so maybe that's just uh how matches always go with that team or maybe it's just that you know this team cat posse is uh maybe it's not their map so we'll see and again that's also early in the season so this team uh has reformed taking some seasons off so maybe just a little bit rusty now that they've really heated up so we'll see how it goes I mean, Rome said, decided to pick this map, so apparently they feel confident on it. I have noticed in their past games, it does, seems like they played the mids even more passively than some teams, like playing very, very deep into this valley. It's no real space initially, just playing it very, very slow. So we'll see if they do that. It seems like sometimes it's, uh, you know, allow the other team to kind of just take position on the height and uh, win the mid that way. But we'll see what happens as we have... Uh, we go live, now going into our first mid, take it away. Yeah, Cat Posse on red, Rome on blue. Rome, the clear underdogs of this match with a new flank at that. They are 
down one map, like I said, but they were able to make it pretty close despite the logs. The logs don't always tell the story, but heading into this first mid, I'm keeping my eyes on Mig. Already pushing down that lower area, but Toss has been able to get out through that doorway. And Frank Spam is just being exchanged. Karama is submarining under the point, and show is Shining Star, but the bombs are being initiated from both soldiers. Toss and Steve go in, but Shining Star is the first to fall. Frisbee's going to go an alley, but Gadilly gets bombed by Toss. Goes down, and Cat Posse had already booked their way out, so Protein is not hurt in the midst of that mid fight and cap posse they may have lost the mid cap but in terms of the situation they are in the lead yeah, and that's definitely unfortunately a very preventable that's one of those times where you know there are a whole lot of times where med really as like those uh watershed moments that really impact the course of a match but that's definitely one of them that's definitely livable while well. he's able to hit the burst up just not quite able to just a little bit of the the rocket mine games of the soldier were too much and uh went down there and now cap posse Able to use this out, but Yum Yum goes down to trap early. So they're just gonna take it through lower impact, or maybe not lower, actually through top left, perhaps. Getting some damage. I'm Scuba Steve here. Still looking stuff by it. Still in greenhouse, and now Electrohard going for the back cap, taking the advantage of the open flank with Yum Yum down. Oh, and but there the is a player here. on the respawn. But Yum Yum is too far. And so Toss is gonna be able to get there. They should be able to fight Nick, but I mean, this mid cap is still gonna go through, and actually, Shining Star, everybody on Rome. <laughs> Just suddenly fell outside of second and on mid too. So Capossi, I didn't expect it to. I guess Rome fully committed to the mid contest. They were hoping Nick would get the cap, the back cap, but just didn't turn out to be their way. And this is looking looking like a Capossi round as they barrel in through left. Get work. I mean, oh, actually, they're going for Uber. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I think that definitely makes sense. I mean, they had really good spawn times. Everyone came up on Rome before they ran. No reason to rush it, especially on a map like Metalworks, at least in my opinion, it's like one of the relatively easier last push. It is pretty small, easy to pinch the team, but gotta watch out for this pyro, that is one of the wrinkles it does, mix things up. Electrohar hiding his gun behind the crates, not, um, make it a little bit harder to spot, but pretty standard spot, all things considered, as he barrels through this left side. The pyro is giving some trouble here, now the gun in the corner is still alive. Gonna go down oh, quick. but Toss is in onto the medic, so Gadil's gonna go down. Able to cap, no Stick's just not blocking the, uh, Able to just clear off the sticks that were putting a threat on him and just cap. I mean, that's one another thing about Metalworks, just the last point caps fairly quickly relative to some other points. But definitely think you gotta keep an eye on. Definitely. Cap Posse, once again, they start off dominant on this map now. It's just a matter of if they can continue it and not stutter step along the way. Because last time they started off strong on Snake Water, they lost a few rounds after that. Oh, never mind that. Toss did a fast rollout in main. And Frisbee's actually going to land onto Red Crate, but actually it's worse for wear. Karama doing a good job of dealing damage. And Shaman went straight onto Mig. Mig is low. Toss bombing in. Lands onto Lower House and kills Gadilly. But Toss and Yum the flank is down for Cat Posse. But Cat Posse, they're going to group around their medic. Protein is safe in this valley area. But his defendants, they're all going down. Karama dead, but Cat Posse, they're going to play the same blueprint of the mid. Kill the medic, fall back, keep your meta alive, and re-push back in. Yeah, I mean, good... I like the decision to leave there down the combat class is kind of in an awkward position in Valley. Uh, lost one of the exit, but nonetheless, they have kept the Uber, which is the important part. Still, very big out here, 80 out. Gonna have plenty of time to wait for Kurama. See how they take this. Yeah, also, they went through this underpass, went through the Valley area. Just gotta be careful that they took down Yum Yum last time. Kind of, obviously, got scouted and it looks like Toss just spotted out, so that does come out, and they are just gonna pop it to a lower. Getting on the view on this oh right gosh. here. Nick. Seeing them key to be going down to Electroheart behind in the valley, but he's going to get taken down by the 2v1. Oh, no, no he's three people up on mid, so I want to see if... Yeah, and Rome does take advantage of those two people to gone back. Oh, but Karama with a 2 type <laughs> on Mig, taking him down, and that's going to be a... Never mind by Rome, just going to walk their way back out. Uh, I like the attempt to take advantage of those two people coming back, use a window, and they did have a window, get back in, just very unfortunate. Nice, some very nice spikes by Karama, evening it out there, and... As uh, we pause, I'll let you take it away for a few minutes as I take a quick restroom break. Yeah, we just saw there, Rome, they tried to get off the back foot as quick as the Uber had faded. And as Nick ran over onto KTB, on the Banny Shed and killed him and then took the 2v1. Didn't win it, but obviously distracted. But Cap Posse, they were able to answer back thanks to some individual heroics from Karama. As we are in a pause situation with five minutes. Having a lapse through the 30 minute round timer on this map. Should we have to go to it, we will go to continuous overtime. But Cat Posse, 
They've taken a round off on Rome's map pick in Rome. They're currently on the back foot, having to fall back to second after having lost two of their players, one of them being Mig. And they do have full Uber ad to, to go with this potential repush, but never mind that. We're going to pause. We don't know if it's tactical. We don't know if it's technical, but we can only hope that maybe Rome somehow went coast to coast in the next 90 seconds. Well, never mind that. We'll do some quick cap of what has happened so far as i said we are on the second map snake wander ended 5-3 in favor of cat posse rome were able to bring it 3-2 at one point after having started off down 2-0 but cat posse answered back with three rounds in quick succession to take the map now we are on metalworks and cat posse they're looking to take this now for those who do not know the rome stocks they were penny stocks they had been delisted off the new york stock exchange they became over-the-counter penny stocks during snake water they were reintroduced back to the new york stock exchange but right now i think they may have been otc again they may have been put on the pink sheets their penny stocks once again but there is still a glimpse of hope for the rome guys yeah very volatile stock right now i mean uh you gotta wonder there's some sort of a sneaky shenanigans going on some insider trading i uh i'd be very suspicious i'd be very suspicious you know, so. I think I think there's some insider trading going on by Ashton took my homie, Rive and Raven. You know, they they intentionally left. They bought some puts on Rome. They internally sabotaged the team. They left, and then they replaced the Rive with Nick. They picked up a newbie in Frisbee. They knew that Rome didn't have too much choices in terms of relative invite experienced players. But okay, it's okay. It's okay. There is still a chance, especially when you have a leader like VLS Caesar. Yeah, so I mean, overall, I mean, at least not as fast of a game as the uh, or the first two rounds as we had in the first map. Uh, oh, oh we're as back I say now. that, we are back in Yum Yum. Oh, I think that's my HUD. I will yeah, Frisbee recurring. had been chasing in Valley there, and Yum Yum is going to try to go. He hasn't been spotted in lower, and he's walking up the ramp area. But oh, somehow Steve turns around and just has that sixth sense. They're going to chase down Yum Yum, but for how long can Yum Yum stay alive, and how long? Can he negate this Uber just said that Broteen has? It seems like it's doing pretty good, and they actually are able to take second off of that. They're going to use it back in. They know they still have Slade Uber at on Rome. They're going to kill Toss for that, but not much else will be found here. Capossi, they have Uber advantage. Yeah, I kind of like Kyle's room with that play there. I think they're going to have to pop out in with only 10%, and if they, he lived there, they wouldn't be able to refight much sooner. But speaking of which, now fighting these picks over in Valley, Huge possibly, second but point. are able to get out and... Rama getting a nice little trap on Vio there. Nice pick. So we'll see. Looks like, yeah, I mean, with that pick there, it definitely makes it much easier to try to milk through. They're oh, they're going to go for a low underpass. A ramp. Uber here leading on Shining Star, but they might not even have to pop. They already see that Rome is booked back to last, but Shining Star still wants more. They're going to push through Shutter. They're going to pop on her. She's going to lead the charge, pistoling down mid to half HP. They find an isolated Electra Heart towards Cubby, and they should be able to clean up momentarily. They do manage to do so, and KTB they kill. getting that nice little 1v1 at the entrance. Just got to focus on Vio, and the cap is yours. Bomb comes in onto Vio. They're also going down, and Karama cleaning up, getting that point. That's going to be 2-0 in favor of Cat Bossy now. Just like you saw in the last map, and there's, once again, that's where the pause up, and that's where the uh, secret magic room has the, uh, the general calling the war meeting, trying to find out what's going on here. And, uh, you know, last time it worked out, so we'll see if they will get back on the offensive here. The RGL playoff script writers definitely envisioned this for the playoffs bracket, I guess. But you know what? Next mid, third mid of this map, Cat Bossy. Two quick rounds, another tactical pause, like Gibbard said. And now we'll see if Rome can turn the tide in their favor. But it's starting off with a pretty passive mid, not until mid gets ran over by a yum yum dump truck. And that's just going to be the mid. And just as soon as it started, it ends. Really, also going to get a fight. Try and jump out, but he'll be fine. Yeah, it just seemed like all of Rome is kind of really deep on that right side. Well, make very isolated on the left. Just asked him to get ran out there and ran out. He did get. <laughs> But Cat Posse, they're already pressuring with Karama so far ahead of his team, a far ahead of the heels at that. And the bomb is in from Toss. Gets bounced actually into Shudder, but doesn't get the kill. Electra Heart though dies. And Yum Yum, he just takes the 2v1 against the flank. And he just wins it and he's given his team the second point. So maybe this tactical pause has not worked in its pizzazz just yet. Cat Posse, they're in a position to get a second with KTB hiding on the right. 
Not really much you can do when someone just runs in and gets two kills like that. Yum Yum also getting taken up very low. Not gonna be able to guarantee another Spruce Sack wave. Frisbee is Frisbee. a consolation prize. Cat Posse, they're gonna go back in. And Veal taking a really aggressive position here. They looks like they want to exchange. They just want to brute force their way into second, even if it means having to exchange both Ubers. But it's not working out so well as Toss catches off a of falling Steve into lower towards the pack. And that means Rome. Oh wow, they actually didn't even use, but the hell, Shining Star just walks over Nick. Once again, the Cat Posse Scouts are just walking and pressing W key. There is no S bind. And Death's Uber is out. The exchange is out far too late, but not to Rome's expectations, Gibbert. Yeah, just can't lose three like that. I mean, very scuffed push out there. Oh, actually able to block the caps too with Steve, maybe, but it's not enough. Everyone's going to go down there. Yeah, that just seemed like a little bit overly ambitious for uh, Rome there. Uh, I mean, I, I do like the, the aggression. I like the bravery, but it seemed like almost sort of a, it seemed a little bit forced to me. Especially because wow. uh, being so close to the combo and uh, them being able to buy the time. Fairly quick rollout to this second point, so uh, ended up not working out for them. And then kind of loot dropping another person before the, the fight really happened. It's not what you want to see. So gotta be very careful maybe not to isolate himself this time. This time Tosh is really on the stop right. Does go down though. A lot of damage. Scoop Steve all a pencil straight in the air. And kills falling fast. Oh, and Gadelli's gonna die here momentarily. This is an entire team wipe for Rome. As Gadelli just delaying the inevitable, finally gets the kill bind. But Cat Posse, this is looking like a, looking like a fourth round. And it might happen in less than 10 minutes. All in all, that sh that's an average about like, what, 2.2 minutes and a, and a half per round. That's crazy. Yeah, very fast game. Kind of like the first game we saw, but except this time they keep the momentum rolling. Now... Idiot, just gotta watch it for this room view on Sniper. They also have a big in the front. Josh, as you say that. Good job. Let's get the trade yeah. out, though. KTB getting the kill on the Sniper. Now, Mig in the funny spot. Gotta be very careful for this. Way up high above the point. Catch some people off guard if you're not careful. Got level 2 in the corner. Gonna go down. Same spot last time. Very fast. Capos has been very good playing the cap oh, time on these. Mig still Mig. shooting the point. And it does look like the funny spot working out, but actually the reclass on Toss, it's not enough. Maybe, maybe he should have uh, stayed in his spot, stayed on his little pooch. Maybe got knocked down, we didn't see, but nonetheless, it was a valiant attempt. It was, a, it, it, was a, it was a huge pinch from Cat Posse. They had just killed three players before Mig even had the chance to drop down like Batman. So, Cat Posse, they're sticking true to the context of the match. They're showing why they are the favorites to take on the upper bracket, third and fourth seeds. So, room take a look kind of looking like GME stocks right now, but a lot more aggressive position for room looks like. <laughs> Are able to get set another oh, minute, another minute of collision. Control C. And then uh, another thing happened. Now it's KTP going crazy this mid. Oh, getting another two kills to clean it up because it's good damage. And then Talos getting that body block in mid air, mid air spike that down A. Now, pushing in the last. They just keep Gadelli alive this time. Just gotta be very careful. ATB went really aggressive in sight of a potential Gadelli fallback on bridge, but Gadelli was tucked in towards the spawn door, so he won't be able to go for that inopportune sack. But Toss is going for the spoon! Oh my gosh! Gadelli hit the AP at the last second! In, got fading off to the left, out through the banana, and gonna live there. Just chance for room to counter sack. But I mean, at this point, you've gotta be feeling maybe a little bit demoralized if you're, uh, if you're room. Definitely feeling a bit. Oh, but Karama might be caught out here. Gets caught out towards Shutter Door by but, Frisbee. And a headshot onto the medic. Electro Heart dropping protein. And there is a glimpse of hope, but there is a scout hiding. But Shining Star, they know Shining Star is potentially behind. Yeah. Room Sucks coming back up onto Gadilly. Just a scout, though. And Vio gonna pistol that down. Don't worry, the bio orders are back in, baby. The Bioers are back in, Rome boys. We are back. As they have taken second. Oh, but the two at the same time, able to get the force by himself. Never mind that. So, stocks, so. back down, back, back down. Don't worry. It's not the end of the trading session. It's 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. One hour left. This is the dawn of the hour for Rome. Yeah, don't know, Potentially bring it back. This ring nice. gets picked off. Frisbee oh. on the retreat. Just Rome falling apart at, at this very end. Kind of, it's very reminiscent of the Catgirl Cafe match right now.
You have a cat policy, try and put the finishing step on it. It be just side and play the point himself. Reclass by Toss, shooting people coming, and that looks like that's gonna be game, set, and match for Cat Bossy. 5 0. Had a little bit scary, the first staff went down, but clawed back since then. Now winning, I believe that is eight rounds in a row. So, yes, yeah. yes. They definitely indeed. figured it out. Top institutional investor for Cat Posse, Mr. Dresner, was biting his nails on that first map, but he comes out with a 10% gain to end, the ma end this match as now. The trading day is over. It's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Cat Posse stocks are high. Rome on the verge of being over-the-counter stocks. They're being delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. Like we said time and time again, I am filing for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. I bought too high on the Rome stock. I bought it at the peak. And now I'm going to sell it at the low. Buy high, sell low. That's the strategy, baby. Yep, I mean... At the end of the day, it is kind of what we expected. Just the uh, little bit of an aberration there in the first map. I mean, but like I said, even getting three rounds here is still pretty impressive for Room. I mean, it's better than they did against Cagro Cafe. It's better than uh, a couple of their matches. So, I mean, and the fact that against a you know, pretty strong team like Gapasi, I had to point out they beat the Covenant 4-2 in their last match of Stage 1. So this team's definitely strong. Definitely could have been competing in the... Uh, Group A bracket if things got maybe just a little bit better early in the season. So. Yeah, if anything, like I said earlier, like in the match, the game talk, the huge thing about this new structure is that it gives teams the chance to start off terribly, but gradually improve over time. And with this new roster change for Rome, thankfully, Stage 2 isn't directly into playoffs. They're, it, this is currently the seeding bracket playoffs. So for them, this is technically a continuation of Stage 1 in a sense to feel out and get a good good idea of how to work out the kinks of their roster so hopefully they are able to make that change happen in preparation for their match now against the number seven seed which is cat girl cafe the other cat team but time will tell and right now maybe they want to look to avoid picking metalworks because that is the songs on the map aren't looking too high for them they might want to pull out something else from the goodie bag get work <laughs> now zero bag. ten on metalworks versus cat based teams so Cat Definitely girls and cats know what you want to see. Uh, any other kind of, a, as we take a quick look at the logs, anyone else you really want to call out from that after that uh, real standout performance? I mean, do you want to look at do you want to look at Shining Star and Yum Yum's performance? Well, seventy seven kills combined. Shining Star leading the way far ahead of anybody else on the server, aside from her partner in Yum Yum, forty four kills. I do want to point out though, you know, Mig. Good amount of damage, but going damage negative. Actually, I believe all the players on Rome went damage negative that match, which is kind of the same storyline from Snakewater, but this time instead of a close score line, it's a absolute wash. But regardless of that, huge lessons to be taken away from this match. Cap Posse for them. They started off slow, but they warmed up like their regular season performance. They started off slow, but they eventually warm up in the end. So congratulations to them. I think we could probably call it for a night as many of our viewers want to go tune into the other match, which is still ongoing. Do you have any shout outs, Goodward? Any shout outs? No, not not at all. Just shout out to, I mean, Rome. I mean, at the end of the day, the second map didn't go so great, but the first map definitely made it a really entertaining match. That would show that they've still got some, you know, got some tools to work with. Maybe these new pickups will uh, be able to work out for them. So look forward to seeing a little bit more from them as they get ready to rematch, as we said, Cat Girl Cafe. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me again today, and I think that's all for me. Yeah, I would like to shout out, not a TFT-related thing, but I would like to shout out the 76ers. Please do not trade Tobias Harris. I would like my free crumble cookie. And that is all I have. Oh, shout out to Dr. Underscore in production. And that is it. Thank you all for tuning in to Firesidecast. We'll see you tomorrow for some IM action.